Okay, perfect. Um, so hello everyone, welcome to um, UC Berkeley's engineering visit. Um, so my name is Christina, I'm going to be your moderator moderator to get today, but before we get started, um, I just wanted to briefly thank all of you for joining us today. Um, I know there's a lot happening in the world and not a lot happening in everyone's lives right now, so thank you for taking an hour out of your day to be here today with us. Um, we truly appreciate it. As I said, my name's Christina. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series. I am from Whittier, California. This is my third year at UC Berkeley. Um, I major in industrial engineering and operations research, which is in the College of Engineering and one of the majors uh, that are going to be talked about today. Um, I am part of the UC Rally Committee, which is a spirit group on ha campus, Hispanics and Engineering and Science, Society of Women Engineers and Haas Bibe, which are all more academic clubs on campus, um, centering around business, science, um, and just groups I'm involved in. So now that we've talked a little bit about me, we wanna talk more about Berkeley and some of the great accomplishments we've had recently. Um, so I wanna give a big congratulations to our newest Nobel Prize winners. So um, as some of you might know, uh, this week is Nobel week, reaching out into next week as well. So UC Berkeley is always at the forefront having many of our professors, faculty, alumni um, in the running for Nobel Prizes. And this last week, I believe Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So um, we won two Nobel Prizes. Jennifer Doudna won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry um, and Reinhard Genzel won the Nobel Prize for Physics. So we are so excited um, that this year we won two Nobel Prizes and um, now we have a total of 25 Nobel laureates um, as faculty for UC Berkeley. Um, sorry, 25 Nobel laureates that um, have been won for UC Berkeley and 10 current faculty that have Nobel Prizes on campus. So our faculty are amazing and they're doing amazing things. So just wanted to shout that out before the tour, um, but you'll hear more about it during the tour as well. So talking about the tour, um, doing a little bit of housekeeping, this will be a 40 to 45 minute presentation. Um, during the presentation, if you have any questions, all your questions, um, you will have to type through the Q&A. The chat function is disabled for participants. There'll be various polls that come up um, throughout the time. So it, it'll ask like, where are you from? What kind of student are you? So just feel free to fill out those polls and it'll just give us a chance to better get to know you. This virtual visit will be recorded, but a different version is going to be available on our website. Um, it is an engineering virtual visit. So it is very much an engineering overview uh, with different material than our regular virtual visit. So if you wanna know uh, more about general campus, housing, safety, those sort of things, I would highly recommend that you also sign up for one of our virtual visits on visit.berkeley.edu. It is a student perspective and our two guides today are current UC Berkeley students um, and are not admissions or financial aid representatives. So all those questions um, will just refer you to those specific departments. And at the end of our virtual visit, I'll hop on, I'll hop back on um, and then moderate a Q&A with both of, both of our guides. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want in the Q&A and then we'll get to them at the end of the tour. Um, so with that, um, I'll let both of our guides for today introduce themselves. Hey everyone, good morning. So my name is Violet and I use the she pronoun series. I am originally from Berkeley, California. So I did not go particularly far for college. I will be entering my third year studying physical geography. And so physical geography, if that doesn't mean much, it's a little bit of a social science and it's a lot of physical science. So I take classes like math and physics and a lot of my courses overlap pretty heavily with environmental and civil engineering, especially with regards to things like hydrology. Some of the things I've involved in on campus during a normal non-Zoom semester would be Cal Ballroom. I'm also a part of undergraduate research in the geography department. I'm a member of Cal Hiking and Outdoor Society, a student group that does all number of outdoor things whenever we can get a moment away from class. And I am also a co-oper, so I'm a member of the Berkeley Student Cooperative, which is a housing system here on campus that we might touch on in brief a little bit later. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Sam. I use the pronoun she, her, and hers. And I'm originally from a town near LA called Torrance, California. I'm a sophomore majoring in industrial engineering and operations research, and some clubs I'm involved in on campus include an engineering sorority called Phi Sigma Rho. I'm also involved in the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers, 
um, which is basically a club full of people within my major. And I'm also involved in Circle K, which is a service organization on campus. Um, it's the college version of Key Wins and Key Club, if you're familiar with that from high school. And so we wanna start off by giving you all a big welcome to UC Berkeley. A poll should have popped up on your screen asking who are you? Feel free to answer this and this helps us tailor the tour more towards our audience today. Just to point out a few of the images on our screen right now. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, we have California Memorial Stadium, which uh, pre-COVID is the stadium that um, is home to our California Golden Bears football team. Game days were some of my favorite days. Uh, before COVID hit, but I'm really looking forward to when we can go back to the stadium and visit all of our friends again. Um, below that, you'll see the logo for 150 Years of Women at UC Berkeley. Uh, Jennifer Doudna's uh, Nobel Prize kind of really speaks to this whole excellence of women, especially women in STEM, so we're really excited to be celebrating that this year, uh, throughout the year. Um, and in the middle, you'll see an image of our Campanile. It's very much an icon of our university. Um, it stands at over 300 feet tall and is the third largest clock and bell tower in the world, which is something we're super proud of. And you can see images of um, students chilling on the glade as well and some images of buildings on campus. And just to go over a quick agenda for today, we're going to start off with an overview of Berkeley and then move on to an academic overview. Then as this is an engineering tour, we'll give all of you a bit of engineering information. And then we'll move on to student life and resources, some labs and maker spaces on our campus, research opportunities, our legacy, and then we'll end with a live Q&A. All right, so we're gonna guys start off with a little bit of history about our campus. So Berkeley was founded way back in 1868 as part of a federal program issuing land grants to new universities around the United States. So that was a whole long time ago. And in fact, Berkeley came quite a number of years before the next UC to be founded, which was UCLA, which was almost 50 years after UC Berkeley. So because of that, we get a lot of rights and privileges that other schools don't really get just because we've been around a little longer. One of those is to be known by a whole bunch of different names. So you might hear us talk about UC Berkeley. You might talk, hear us talk about Cal. You might see official Cal gear that just says California on it in this particular font. And that also is referring to UC Berkeley. All because we are the first of those nine UC campuses. Uh, way back in the day, we also used to express our school spirit a little bit differently. So if you were to go to a football game uh, in our Memorial Stadium that Sam was talking a little bit about earlier, instead of our lovable human in a bear costume mascot you might see today known as Oski, you would have instead actually seen live bear cubs roaming the field. So how's that for school spirit? Obviously there's some ethical issues there, so Berkeley no longer uses slide bear cubs to represent our school spirit and has since migrated to Oski. However, our mascot remains the golden bears. You'll find a whole lot of bear statues, big, small, hidden all over campus. Our campus has about 32,000 undergraduates and about 1,300 or 1,200 graduates. Uh, so many, many of these students are engineers. We have about 4,000 engineers in undergraduate programs, and we have about 2,500 engineers in graduate programs. So we'll talk a little bit more about those distinctions between undergraduate and graduate programs, but having so many graduate students in engineering is a really great resource for undergraduates in engineering because it means there's an abundance of research opportunities and a lot of opportunities to interact with students who are really kind of professionally pursuing the thing that you're exploring as an undergraduate. Thank you, Violet. That was a great introduction. And moving on to academics. So we have five undergraduate colleges, excuse me, here at UC Berkeley. Um, our College of Engineering houses 11 majors, which we'll go into depth in the next few slides. We also have the College of Chemistry, and we always like to note that chemical engineers housed in the College of Chemistry. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you um, do a bit more research into the College of Chemistry. Uh, we also have our College of Letters and Science, which is our largest undergraduate college. It houses over 80 plus majors and about 75% of our undergraduate population falls in this college. Then we have our Rouser College of Natural Resources and our College of Environmental Design. And we always like to make a note about applying directly versus transferring. With engineering specifically, um, a lot 
transferring into the College of Engineering and the College of Chemistry from a college, say, Letters and Science, for example, is a bit more difficult than transferring out because it is a bit more competitive and difficult to get into one of these majors. Um, and then that's why we always recommend applying directly into the College of Engineering um, because it's never guaranteed that you can transfer into this college. Same goes for chemistry. However, with colleges like Letters and Science, it may be a bit more easier to transfer um, into a major within this college. So this brings us to the College of Engineering specifically. So this is a college that most of you guys are gonna be especially interested in if you're here to learn about engineering at Berkeley explicitly. I think it's worth reading the mission statement of this college, which is to transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. So transform is a big verb there, transformative experiences, you know, oh, I don't know, is Berkeley gonna really do that for me? I was skeptical as well, but I think it, there is something uh, true to Berkeley and to university programs in general um, in that they can be very transformative and they really do challenge you to think about things differently. They challenge you to push yourself a lot more than you thought you might be able to. And all of that happens within these sort of principles of culture and community, which I think are unique to Berkeley because even though we do have this incredible technical research apparatus within engineering that's really unparalleled in a lot of public universities. We also essentially are a liberal arts school in many aspects. And so that kind of leads to these, not only like technical innovation and ability and challenging coursework, but these kind of underlying principles of things like challenging the status quo and working towards social justice. And I think you see this in, you know, a lot of my geography classes, for example, there are a lot of environmental engineers who are like, hey, I really want to learn about these cool theories from social science and incorporate them into my work. And there is that kind of, you know, interdisciplinary approach to engineering and thinking about things holistically found at Berkeley. So a poll should have popped up on your screen um, asking what you are interested in. This again helps us tailor the tour more towards your needs and helps us see what majors all of you guys might be interested in so we can go into a bit more depth of that later. Um, so feel free to fill that out. But on screen right now, you'll see an awesome pie chart um, showing the major distribution within the College of Engineering. So all 11 of our engineering majors are ranked in the top nine globally, which is a feat that we are extremely proud of. Um, you'll see that uh, the electrical engineering and computer science major takes up nearly half of our College of Engineering population. Um, and we see that a lot of you guys are interested in bioengineering, eeks, chemical engineering, and we have a really great spread of interest today, which is awesome. Um, we also like to make a note about switching majors. I mentioned earlier that um, switching into the College of Engineering is never guaranteed and is quite um, difficult. And that kind of goes for students who are within the College of Engineering as well. Um, switching majors, say from bioengineering to mechanical engineering is never guaranteed and can be quite difficult as well. But it can be possible if you work with your counselor and kind of plan accordingly. I believe the only major, even if you are in the College of Engineering that you can't switch into is EECS or Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And as for postgraduate paths, a lot of students here go immediately into the industry. I have a lot of friends who have gone on to work for some big tech companies in the Silicon Valley or have even gone on to work for smaller startup companies or even start their own startups, which is super cool. Um, a lot of students also go on to graduate school here at UC Berkeley. We have a great graduate school program for engineering as well as other disciplines. You can earn a Master of Science, a PhD, or a uh, Master's of Engineering. Our Master's of Engineering program here is actually a five-year, a fifth-year Master's program. So if you stay for one extra year after your undergraduate journey, you can earn that Master's of Engineering. But of course, you aren't limited to graduate school just at UC Berkeley. Um, a lot of students go on to graduate school at a bunch of other uh, schools across the country as well. And then research is an opportunity that's always available to you, whether you're an undergrad, a graduate student, or after you've graduated from UC Berkeley com uh, completely. Research is a very defining feat of us here at Cal, and a lot of students will partake in that uh, at some point during their college career. 
Okay. Thank you, Sam. That's awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get into the majors or the academic programs within the College of Engineering. So the first one I want to start with is something called Engineering Undeclared. This is obviously not actually a major, uh, but within the College of Engineering at Berkeley, because when you apply, you're required to indicate your intended major, uh, this option exists for people who truly have no idea what sort of engineering they want to do and are particularly interested in just leaving that option open. So the way engineering undeclared works, if you're admitted, is you essentially take engineering prerequisites like math, physics, chemistry, along with other engineers, and you take a seminar your first semester that goes into the different disciplines of engineering taught at Berkeley. And then by the end of your fourth semester, you're asked to declare any of the majors within the College of Engineering, whichever one you might choose. This is also the most competitive pathway to be admitted into in the College of Engineering. So if you have an idea of what engineering discipline you're interested in, you are more likely to be admitted under that discipline just by the pure numbers of students who they have spaces for. Next, I want to go into nuclear engineering, which might be my favorite nuclear or might be my favorite engineering major in the whole department. I have so many friends who are nuclear engineers. Um, Berkeley has a really long history of nuclear engineering, and a lot of their scientists were involved in early, early nuclear research that led to the Manhattan Project and the development of the hydrogen bomb. And to this day, in uh, Echeverry Hall, there is actually a basement that was formerly home to a nuclear reactor. In the 70s, they got rid of the nuclear reactor in part because of public pressure, but in part because the professor who was in charge of it decided to retire. And, you know, there's just not that many people around who know how to safely manage a nuclear reactor. So no more nuclear reactor in Echeverry Hall, but it is still the building with our nuclear engineering department. A lot of the things students study in the department include topics like energy and radiation, but I have a couple friends who are graduate students in the department and also focus pretty closely on nuclear policy and kind of international arms policy around new topics relating to nuclear energy and nuclear weapons. Uh, one of those friends actually has done a lot of research in Russia and worked at Chernobyl looking at uh, how nuclear radiation is affecting the biota. So nuclear really can go into a bunch of different directions. The next of those majors is going to be bioengineering. So this is kind of a subject area which Jennifer Doudna teaches in a lot. Uh, the bioengineering building, Stanley Hall on campus, is where her lab is and I believe possibly her office as well. I have another friend who's worked, who graduated and works as a lab tech in her lab and gets to do a lot of really amazing genetics research working with all sorts of different uh, materials and proxies, doing a lot of PCR, polymerase chain reactions, uh, and really leading to super innovative research, especially related to COVID, is something they've been working on a lot recently. Awesome. Thanks, Violet. So moving on to a few of our other majors, we have Industrial Engineering and Operations Research, or IEOR. I'm a little biased. This is my favorite major, maybe because I'm majoring in it. But in our major, we focus a lot on complex systems operations. We focus on making processes more effective, efficient, and safe. Um, the way I like to see it is we're really a major that finds the intersection between technology and business. To give you a few examples of what IEORs might do, um, with amusement parks like Disneyland, a lot of IEOR majors go into uh, focus, focusing on how to restructure the lines so everyone can get on the rides and get out as efficiently as possible. Um, but that's just one of the many, many paths that you can take as an IUR major. I highly recommend checking it out because not a lot of schools offer it. And I didn't fully know what it was until I did a bit of research on it myself. Um, but now I really love my major and can't picture myself in anything else. Then we have material science and engineering. So um, these people focus a lot on seeking out and sourcing desirable material properties. They focus a lot on the functionality, the environmental impact, these and cost of uh, materials of products. I think to give another really surface level example is to think about the packaging of products, say like Amazon products or something like that. Um, a lot of material science engineers go into sourcing the, pro the, the materials that go into building the packaging. Make, they make sure that it's functional, environmentally friendly, and cost efficient. Um, so that's just something to think about if that might be something that you're interested in in the future. 
Just to point out a few of the pictures on the right, we have students in an IUR lab working. We also have an image of Hearst um, Mining Circle and Hearst Mining Building. These uh, locations on campus are kind of the central hub of all of the engineering buildings on campus. So hopefully when you get the chance to come visit us in person, you'll be able to see some of these um, with your own eyes for yourself. Yeah, thank you, Sam. My brother is actually a materials engineering graduate student in his fourth year of his PhD at UC Berkeley, and he works running uh, computer simulations to better understand the magnetic properties of different materials. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on in that department as well. Next, I'm going to go on and talk about civil and environmental engineering. So uh, this is a department that not every school that studies engineering has. It focuses on things like hydrology, something, of course, I mentioned I've taken earlier. Some other courses that fall under this might be classes on air pollution or climate change mitigation. And there's really a focus on using data to address uh, natural problems and environments and uh, working to build structures that sort of allow for natural processes to occur in a way that is safe for humans. And there's also an emphasis on sort of sustainability of infrastructure and also I would say on equity within environmental engineering in particular. There's a lot of really interesting research in, at Berkeley as far as water chemistry in particular in our environmental engineering departments. A uh, friend who I grew up with, uh, his dad actually, because I grew up in Berkeley, his dad uh, is a professor in the environmental engineering department, and he's written a couple of really interesting books about kind of water policy globally. So again, like those connections to sort of not only the local, but the international. Next, we have mechanical engineering. So this is a really fun major as well. They're all fun. Can't say that any of them are not fun. Uh, mechanical engineering obviously is a little bit more uh, focused on the process of baking things. So oftentimes you'll find mechanical engineers ending up in one of our many maker spaces on campus working on designing various projects, whether for personal pleasure, for class, art, whatever it might be. It tends to lend itself to mechanical engineering. There's a lot of uh, focus on material and machine design as well in order to sort of uh, create systems or mechanisms or robots or things that do other things. So if you're interested in any of those aspects, definitely check out mechanical engineering at Berkeley. Awesome, thanks Violet. And moving on to some more engineering majors, we have a really interesting major, engineering science. So within this major, uh, there, you can focus on en energy engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics and environmental engineering science. Um, honestly, I don't I didn't know a whole lot about this major until recently. And what I've learned is that it's a very theoretical major um, rather than or, or rather than studying the applications of some of this major, you focus on the theory and how um, it's a very interdisciplinary major, so it can be really applicable to a bunch of different fields. And within, within this major, there's a focus on green technology, energy systems, sciences, math, biology, and physics. And from my understanding, there's a lot of flexibility in this major. You get a lot of freedom to um, uh, pick your schedule and your coursework. Um, so I understand that it's really applicable to a bunch of different fields. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, would highly recommend asking any questions or doing a bit of research on this yourself. All right, so we're going to wrap up with our last few engineering majors. I want to talk about electrical engineering and computer science. So that's not two separate majors, just to be clear. That's one major. It's called electrical engineering and computer science, or EECS for short, and it falls under the College of Engineering. So EECS at Berkeley is very much focused on technological problem solving. It's a combination of hardware and software. There is a lot of interaction with industry. I have you know, friends who were EECS majors that went on to do software engineering at Google and companies in Silicon Valley. I also have friends who've gone on to do like far more technical pursuits as far as uh, kind of electrical workings. And then there are also lots of people who go on and end up doing research. So I know some other EECS PhD students who are doing research into AI safety as in like how to create robots that don't destroy humans. So really a lot of different directions that you can go here. 
we have a couple of really interesting Eats labs on campus, including something called the Nano Lab, which is in a building just behind this one that you see a bunch of pictures here of here. Uh, that's a lab on campus that focuses on nanotechnology systems. So there are a lot of collaborations with uh, private industry. So you might find researchers from IBM, for example, who are doing research into trying to build different kinds of chips for their computers in that lab. And right alongside them, you're going to see research groups from campus who are working on solving problems related to quantum computing, for example. So interesting opportunities for sort of work inside and outside of the public sphere in those labs and in the department in general. Okay, so again, to clarify, we wanna talk about EECS, electrical engineering and computer science, and just the, you know, the part of it, the CS, computer science. So within a totally different undergraduate college at Berkeley, the College of Letters and Science, there is this other separate major that is a Bachelor of Arts in computer science. That is the computer science or CS major. In the College of Engineering, there is this EECS, EECS major. Those are different majors. I know, it's very confusing. That is a Bachelor's of Science. The difference between these two programs is primarily the EE, since they both have the CS. EECS majors and CS majors often take classes together, they have a lot of similar course requirements, they're often eligible for similar research opportunities, but they are in different undergraduate colleges. So if you apply to electrical engineering and computer science in the College of Engineering, you have to apply directly to electrical engineering and computer science, whereas if you apply to the College of Letters and Science, it actually does not matter what you indicate as your interested major because you'll just be admitted undeclared. That's how it works for everyone entering the College of Letters and Science. And then sometimes before your second year, you're expected to take a bunch of classes, explore different things, and declare your major. But in order to declare the major computer science, the X of X, you need to do a couple things. Basically, a lot of people want to study computer science, which is because it's super cool. So they try to make sure that students who are declaring the major are you know, committed, academically qualified, and in order to show that, what you have to do is get a 3.3 GPA in the three introductory classes, CS61A, CS61B, and CS70. So those are just introductory computer science classes. And that basically comes out to, I think, a B average in those three classes. And if you get that, you're good to go. You declare the major. It's a little bit different than a capped major. There's not like, you know, only five people can declare computer science every semester, nothing like that. You just have to achieve a certain grade point average in those three classes. And then after that, I don't know, C's get degrees, you'll be fine. Uh, you just pass your classes, you can totally do it. There's a lot of great support systems on campus if you're anywhere close to not passing them. So yeah, and then also different kind of general education and breadth requirements because those are two different undergraduate colleges. If you have any further questions about those, we'll be happy to answer them down below in the chat. Awesome, thanks Violet. Yeah, a lot of people have questions about EECS and CS, so we like to address those. And another poll should have popped up on your screen asking where are you joining us from today? Feel free to answer that and let us know. But moving on to a bit more on academics, we have other opportunities outside of majors. So you have the opportunity to, make, to uh, participate in a joint major. And joint majors basically combine two different disciplines within the College of Engineering. Of course, this means your schedule is going to be a bit more rigorous, so it's not for everyone. But if it sounds like something that you'd like to do, maybe learn about two different majors at the same time, would highly recommend checking that out. We also have a ton of different minors. Um, the coolest thing with minors is that you don't have to pick up a minor just in the College of Engineering. You can pick up a minor in any of our five undergrad colleges, regardless of what major you are. So minors are a great opportunity to learn about things beyond your own major. We also have certificates, which I like to think of as less rigorous minors. Of course, we don't have that many to offer. We only have two listed below. The Design Innovation Certificate and the Entrepreneurship and Technology Certificate. I'm actually going to earn the Entrepreneurship and Technology Certificate myself because my major IOR um, heavily overlaps with the courses required to take or to earn the certificate. So I can earn it pretty easily with like one or two extra classes. And then we have the Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program or MET. MET combines a, a a degree from our Haas Graduate School of Business in Business Administration with any engineering discipline of your choosing. 
and it allows you to earn two of those degrees in the span that a normal student would earn one degree. The only thing with MET is that it's pretty competitive to get into. You can apply as an incoming, you apply as an incoming freshman, but if they just recently um, announced that they would accept students who are continuing students. So coming up in the fall of next year, sophomores, I believe, can apply to be a part of the next MET cohort as well. But MET is pretty competitive to get into. Um, would highly suggest asking any questions if you're interested in because combining business with engineering is something that a lot of people want to do and they usually have a lot of questions and are really interested in part participating in this. All right, so another one of those confusing clarifications that we want to go into. Thank you for that, Sam, by the way. Uh, talking about minors and certificates, we want to go on to these one last major that is technically an engineering major, but does not fall under the College of Engineering. So it's a bit confusing. The next of those undergraduate colleges that is relevant to us today talking about engineering would be the College of Chemistry. So this college has only about a thousand students and it encompasses three different majors on campus. So this would be chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. So oftentimes people assume chemical engineering falls under the College of Engineering. Well, guess what? It doesn't. So I know it's a little confusing, uh, but it is still an engineering major. It has engineering in the name. It's just in a different undergraduate college. It, Engineering, much like chemistry, is the major you would apply to directly within the college. And I think it's worth mentioning that we have the top ranked programs in chemistry, not only nationally, but internationally. There are a whole lot of elements that have been discovered at UC Berkeley by our chemists, 16 in particular. Uh, some of the more obviously one, obvious ones are named after us, including Berkelium, Berkeley, California, California, Americium, America, and so on. Uh, in fact, many of you, if you've taken high school chemistry, you're probably familiar with Lewis dot structures. There's a building on Berkeley's campus called Lewis Hall because Gilbert Lewis was a professor here. And believe it or not, back in the day, he was actually teaching chemistry 1A, the introductory chemistry class for UC Berkeley students, trying to figure out a better way to describe bonding and orbital structures and as a teaching tool for his students, he came up with the concept of Lewis dot structures, which you might have loved or been tortured with, depending on how you felt about your high school chemistry class. And moving on, we have, just to go into a bit more about academics, we have structure and class sizes. So here at Cal, all of our classes are divided into a few different components. Most classes will be divided into a lecture and discussion section, and some courses will have you take a lab section as well, usually some of your biological sciences or physics courses. Um, so GSIs or graduate student instructors lead these discussion sections because in lectures, you're usually surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of other students and you don't really get that kind of individualized help that you might have gotten back in high school. So that's where the discussion section comes into play. GSIs lead classes and sections of about 30, maybe 40 students at most. And in this section, they break down the material that's been gone over in lecture, and that's where you can kind of get this one-on-one -on -one help with your peers and your GSI as well. On top of that, we have office hours. So every week, professors and GSIs will open up their, um, their office, or these days their Zoom room, where students can drop in and ask any questions or get any help on homework projects or if they have a midterm coming up. So those are really helpful. Students don't take advantage of this enough. Um, and moving on to class sizes. So class sizes are dependent on your major. Typically your first two years here, you'll be in a lot of really large classes because you're taking your lower division classes and prerequisite courses. But as you progress and get, um, it, when you become a junior and senior level, your classes usually shrink in size especially as you take more major specific classes. And sometimes in class interaction will, or classes will use eye clickers to test your knowledge um, and mark attendance if you're in person. They're like little remote controls that you can use to answer tests or quit mini pop quizzes live. So the professor knows that you're learning and paying attention. And as for resources, we have a ton of resources here at Cal, too many to list, but some of the biggest resources we have are the Student Learning Center or the SLC. 
Um, they provide a lot of tutoring services where you can just drop in and get help from people who volunteer or fellow students who've taken the class and succeeded, which is really helpful. Um, and then we have engineering student services, services, which are specific to the College of Engineering. The ESS uh, contains a bunch of resources just for students in the College of Engineering, which is really helpful. And the ESS is also where your four-year academic advisors will be if you need any help from them. That's something cool to note about the College of Engineering is that during our four years here, we have one academic advisor. So in some cases, you get to build a closer bond with them um, if you choose to. And it's really nice being able to have uh, someone who's constant during your four years here at Cal when everything else is changing around you. Okay. Thanks for that, Sam. So we're going to go on and talk a little bit about student life on campus as well, since, you know, that is also important in addition to academics. Uh, for engineers, uh, some of the important things as far as extracurriculars might include some of our engineering clubs and competition teams. So there's a whole bunch of them listed out on this slide. But essentially, different engineering disciplines might have different clubs on campus that work on really cool engineering projects. And typically, these clubs are actually open to anyone. So you don't necessarily have to be an engineering major to join. If you're really excited and interested in them, then you would be totally be able to uh, join. As far as uh, different programs for students on campus, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our Women in Science and Engineering theme program, or WISE. So that's a residential theme program. There's a residence hall uh, that's only home to female identifying students. It's called Stern Hall. And within that residence hall, there is a program that you can elect to join if you're a female identifying student and interested in STEM or studying engineering, anything like that in which you basically take a seminar once a week for your first semester or your first year rather that you spend in that residence hall and you talk about engineer issues related to the representation of women or anyone who is an assist man in engineering and in STEM. And you get to kind of like live and study and work with people who have a similar experience to you in that area. And then afterwards, a lot of people end up, you know, going on to choose to live with these people or forming sort of permanent course study groups with the people they lived with their first year. Some other programs we have on campus in a similar vein would be our Black Engineering and, Sci and Science Student Association. So this is an organization that very much like its name gathers Black students in engineering and sciences and tries to talk about, you know, maybe issues that affect them, host study groups, work in residential settings, anything like that. We have a similar society called Hispanic Engineers and Scientists. I know that these guys throw awesome study sessions. Um, I have some friends who have attended some of their engineering study groups and found them really, really helpful. Of course, there's also organizations for students who are part of the educational opportunity program. So usually students who maybe are first generation college students or at least not both of their parents didn't both go, their parents didn't both go to a four year university as well as pre-engineering programs. So before students even get to campus, sometimes they might be selected and invited to come and learn more about Berkeley engineering and be encouraged to consider engineering, especially at Berkeley, as their future path. Thanks, Violet. And moving on to a few more clubs and competitions, competition teams that we offer here at Berkeley, we have Cal Sol. So they are a solar vehicle team. They make solar powered race cars, which is super fun. Um, we also have our Cal Steel Bridge team. Uh, our Berkeley Formula Racing Team, Biomedical Engineering Society, our Society of Women Engineers, which is, I believe, one of the largest engineering clubs on this campus. I know a ton of other women who are involved in this camp or in this club in some form or another. We also have Cal Hacks. They throw this really large hackathon on every year. I don't know how they're doing it this year, but they always manage to have a ton of great sponsors and opportunities for students uh, regardless of their level of experience with hackathons. We also have pioneers in engineering, as well as a lot of department honor societies. So depending on your major, you may be able to join one of these honor societies if you have really great academic standing. And just to point out a few, pic few pictures on the right, you'll see some images of our civil engineering concrete canoe team, as well as aerospace, SAE, and Cal Stoll, which is that uh, solar powered vehicle uh, racing team that I mentioned earlier. Okay, awesome. So that brings us to some of those makerspaces and labs that we talked a little bit about earlier. 
The first one I want to bring up is in Sutar Jedi Hall, so Citrus, uh, the Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society. So this is an organization that has a whole bunch of different things. Uh, one of their programs is the lab I mentioned earlier, the Nanotechnology Lab. I actually had a really amazing opportunity in high school to do an internship in that lab that was targeted at young women who were interested in STEM and the sciences but hadn't previously necessarily considered it as a career path. So at the time I was thinking about going into the social sciences and I had taken this really amazing chemistry class with my high school teacher and he was like, you seem like you really like chemistry. Why don't you apply to this? And he like pulled me out of class one day, handed me the information about the program and was like, yeah, just go apply. And I was like, oh, I guess I have to. And then I did. And then I got in. And then I had this amazing opportunity to spend a summer working in Sutar Jedi alongside engineers and older students who were enrolled in Berkeley at the time and were studying electrical engineering, computer science, studying materials engineering. And I, yeah, I think it really did change how I, what I wanted to pursue in the future. In addition, some of the other spaces we have on campus include Jacobs Hall, who might find a, a lot of mechanical engineers hanging out here. They have some really amazing things like tons of 3D printers, laser cutting. You can learn how to weld at Jacobs Hall. So there's all sorts of different opportunities that you get access to if you just purchase a, something called a Maker Pass for the semester. And fun fact, if you're an EOP student, the Maker Pass is actually, uh, I believe, at least heavily discounted, if not free. So you have access to all of those opportunities without having to pay for it, which is really, really cool. Furthermore, we have some more machine shops uh, targeted at mechanical engineers in Hesse Hall. And in Davis Hall, we have an epic construction bay. So if you end up joining Concrete Canoe, one of those many teams here on campus that builds a concrete canoe and races in it, a lot of your work might be going on in that construction bay where they have all sorts of different equipment to help you test how strong your materials are. And I actually also work at Citrus as well. I work in the People and, People and Robotics Research Desk with a professor. I'm his student assistant. It's been a blast. I would love to answer any questions if anyone has any too. But moving on to research. So research is a really key um, component of our university. So in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see our mascot, Oski, you know, spending some time doing a bit of research of his own. Um, so just to point out a few opportunities for research we offer on campus, one of our biggest research uh, opportunities here is URAP, or the Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program. URAP is super, super big on campus because they, uh, they um, have this online system where you just fill out an application and you can see a list of all of the opportunities for research available. You can even get involved in this your first semester as a freshman. I have a lot of friends who did this their first semester and they were able to get experience the second they stepped foot on this campus. So um, there is no limit to the amount of research you can do here. Even if you aren't an engineering major, um, you can get involved in research if you look for it as well. Um, we also have Beehive, which I believe is similar to URAP, but is more geared towards engineering and STEM or STEM fields. We also have the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. This lab sits on top of a hill about 15, 20 minutes away from our campus. Also a great opportunity for research here at this lab if you can um, reach out to some of the professors working here or apply through them. We also have our Sutarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. They host a event called the Collider Collider Cup, which a bunch of students team together and they pitch their startup ideas to a panel of experts in, the, in this field. And um, the winner gets to take home the Collider Cup, which is super cool. Um, we also have a lot of undergrad, undergrad and professional programs and research. So because research is such a prominent part of our campus, there is really no um, limit to research, like I mentioned earlier. Even just cold emailing professors you might have or professors you're interested in could result in a lot of great opportunities for you on this campus. Awesome, yeah, thank you. So kind of jumping off of research, uh, that's one of the things that has created so many notable alumni for Berkeley's campus. So in this case, particularly Shafi, uh, Sh sorry, Shafi Goldwasser, who won recently won a Turing Prize uh, in computer science. So this is like one of the most kind of prestigious and notable prizes in the field. So I know it's just meaningless to kind of like throw another prize out there, but if you get a chance, wiki these people, they are really cool and have made some really amazing contributions. 
In addition, Rube Goldberg, who is an engineer and cartoonist, uh, also really involved in early machinery. Of course, uh, Dean Liu was an instructor, or is an instructor, researcher, and administrator, and also the first female dean of the college. I believe that she was actually the one who instigated the internship program that I had an amazing opportunity to take part in when I was in high school. And of course, how can we forget Steve Wozniak, who was a co-founder of Apple and very involved in uh, kind of the early engineering of the products. Of course, this year is our 150th anniversary of admitting women to UC Berkeley, just one year after the admission of any student, or just one year after the admission of men, Berkeley admitted women on equal terms which is really kind of unique in a lot of universities founded within the same era. So today we're celebrating the achievements of our female faculty in particular. This is especially relevant and useful to highlight the accomplishments of Jennifer Dunna, who just won a Nobel Prize this week, which is pretty amazing. I think we're going to move on Hello. to our live Q&A session. Sorry, Christina, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, thank you, Sam. So we're going to go straight into our um, Q&A session. So taking questions that were asked during the tour. So we'll start off real quick um, with Violet first. Our first question of the day, not really engineering based, but more they want to know more about Berkeley. Someone asked, is there stuff to do off campus around the city of Berkeley, outside the city of Berkeley? They basically just want to know what there is to do um, around Berkeley if they are on campus um, when they decide to come. Well, I have some terrible and disappointing news. Uh, there are so many things to do in Berkeley, you will not be able to decide which one you want to spend your time on. And it's going to be a really painful adjustment having to make those decisions. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, there are tons of things to do in Berkeley. I mean, I'm biased, I grew up here, so I know a lot of a lot of them, but uh, Berkeley is a really fun college town uh, for a lot of reasons. So there's obviously a lot of like student geared activities. There's a lot of social things going on. There's parties to go to. There's different clubs hosting different events. You can go take a free dance class or learn Spanish or whatever you might be interested in. You can um, also spend a lot of time outside. So another thing I think that's really great as far as like recreational activities is that Berkeley is in this really unique location where we're very much in a city, but there is a super large regional park in the hills right behind the campus that you can actually walk to from basically any of the student dorms. Uh, so this is a really great way if you wanna go for a run or a bike ride or a jog or find some people walking cute dogs and go pet the cute dogs, you can do all of that up in the hills. Uh, walking around the city in general is nice as well. There's bike paths, fun places to go, pretty parks, things like that. I personally enjoy visiting our public library. I'm quite nerdy. It's a really nice building in downtown Berkeley. On the same block, there's also three movie theaters and like in a ridiculous number of restaurants. So Berkeley is kind of known for its food scene as well. Definitely a great place to get something to eat. And then you can also explore the whole sort of, you know, legacy of like the slow food movement and fresh organic ingredients. If you swing by the Berkeley Farmer's Market, um, you might find some cool street musicians there as well. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on. It's a cute college town. There's always something to do on the weekend. It's not a massive city with, you know, like the ballet and the opera and the museums. But if you are looking for that, San Francisco is just across the bay. Takes, you know, maybe 30 to 40 minutes to get door to door uh, from leaving from the downtown Berkeley BART station. And you can do that for about $6 usually to get to downtown San Francisco, I believe. And if you decide to take the bus, it maybe takes 10 minutes longer and that's gonna be totally free because it's covered by your UC Berkeley transit pass. So yeah, in the city itself and in the surrounding areas, I would say there are lots of things to do. If you get bored with Berkeley, which how could you possibly get bored with Berkeley? You can always go to Oakland or San Francisco or even up into the North Bay and check out Richmond any of the areas surrounding. Yeah, thanks Violet. Yeah, there's just so much to do around the city of Berkeley. And I think also that's kind of the same story within Berkeley. Like we have over a thousand student registered organizations. So there's also just a lot to do at like the actual campus as well. So you will never get bored. Um, the next question is um, for Sam. So Sam, uh, someone wanted to know what was your freshman experience like in the College of Engineering and how did you make friends in your classes? 
so you just went through freshman yeah. year um, and you're now in second year so you might be a little be able to remember a bit better um, how that experience was like for you oh yeah I remember it vividly because my first month or maybe two just awful experience I was one of those people who just could not transition into college well didn't really make friends with my roommate so on top of like my living situation wasn't great but the rigor of college was just such a whole step above what I was used to in high school so coming from like the top of your high school pack to just being very average at Berkeley was something that I struggled to come to terms with but I think joining these organizations and being more involved in the engineering community made me feel a lot more comfortable because you meet a lot of people who are going through the same thing and you realize like out of 30,000 students, the majority of the people here are feeling mutual or feeling the same way as you do. And to answer your second question, um, oh, well, sorry, to finish my first part, I ended up having a lot greater freshman year experience. Um, started out rough, but it ended on a really, really high note and I'm really happy with um, how my first year went. But as for making friends with people in my classes, not going to lie, didn't make a whole lot of friends in my class itself. I made a lot of study groups and friends or temporary friendships in those study groups just to get through some of those classes. But the majority of my uh, friend group, my core friends, I met through actually Golden Bear Orientation, which was uh, the orientation you go through uh, prior to the start of your freshman year. But most of my friends were made through my organizations, which kind of makes sense because you're joining an organization of people who share your interests and your passions. Um, so we bonded over that. And a lot of people just in the College of Engineering and in my major, I got close to because we're a pretty small major, so we stuck together. And um, a lot of the organizations have continued on to this year. So I think that just goes to show how much of an impact these organizations can have on you beyond your classes. But I know a lot of people who met some of their best friends in their classes as well. So you can't count that out. Yeah, I, that's true. I think discussion sections is for me. I found friends through there, but yeah, sometimes it's a little intimidating to like go up to someone in class and just kind of introduce yourself. Um, but for sure, I know discussion sections for me freshman year helped me a lot, even not to just like make like lifelong friendship, but just make friends to like study with and have like, you know, like study groups with at the library, stuff like that. Um, so talking about just like taking classes and experiences, um, once we're, you're a senior or getting closer to the end of your time at Berkeley, someone asked, how does Berkeley help um, find jobs after you graduate? Are there resources um, for internships or on-campus work? So yeah, jobs after graduating, but also are there any internships on campus work? Um, and I think both of you can kind of talk about this. I don't know, Violet, you wanna take some part of that question and then Sam, maybe you can add on. Yeah, so, oh man, I've been thinking about the possibility of graduating early. So I have been looking into, you know, jobs, which is a disincentive from graduating early, let me tell you, oh man. Uh, but Berkeley does actually provide quite a few resources. And I mean, we have a college and career, or we have a career center, like many, many universities. And it's actually, it's really funny. I like went on our career website, Handshake, to like look at some stuff. And now they like keep sending me emails and like they're weirdly accurate. So I think I might have like indicated that I might be interested in nonprofit work at some point. And they keep like hounding me about like these different information sessions for like at careers at NGOs and like yeah you know it's more emails it's kind of annoying but I'm also like oh man I should really go to these so I sort of appreciate it um yeah there are a lot of like information sessions and I'm also realizing like oh my god I don't know how to write like a letter of motivation if I want to apply to graduate programs and very quickly I do like a search on the career website and there's usually something relevant to that which I really appreciate because I feel like applying to colleges, I didn't really have that so much. I had no idea how to write a college application and nobody really told me. I just had to figure it out. Uh, but Berkeley does provide a lot more of those resources, I would say. I don't know if you guys have ever attended any of those events, but I have found them actually surprisingly helpful. And there's like written guidance as well as if, if you don't want to sit through somebody's Zoom lecture. Yeah, and if I could add on to that, um, Berkeley throws a ton of 
uh, what are they called? Career fairs. That's how I got my first internship. I work with a startup currently right now. Um, so Berkeley Skydeck is the startup accelerator and they threw this huge uh, startup career fair that I attended and that's how I got my first internship. But on top of startups, they have career fairs with um, companies throughout a ton of different disciplines, not just limited to engineering, which is super cool. And um, just being a Berkeley student alone, you have a lot of access to all these resources and companies kind of know what to expect from you. So you get a lot of good um, feedback from when you apply to other companies as well. Um, and as for resources, I know Berkeley offers a ton of them. I mentioned earlier, but personally, I found that just reaching out to upperclassmen, especially upperclassmen in my major, has been my main resource of kind of learning about uh, internship and research opportunities. Um, they've kind of helped me navigate that whole professional development field, even if I'm just a sophomore, kind of starting on that process right now because um, I want to start early. But a lot of help from people who are just knowledgeable and have been through this experience um, has been uh, my main uh, source of getting knowledge about internships and career opportunities as well. Yeah, I agree. There's a bunch of resources out there and there's a lot of different ways that people get jobs and people get internships. But if you're just willing to look for a resource or look for help, like it is out there and you can just go out and ask for it. Um, but there's just so many resources that sometimes you'll get overwhelmed. So just like ask a friend, ask an upperclassman, go to one of our offices on campus and they will lead you in the right direction. Um, yeah, so we're getting close on time. And the last question uh, that I want actually both of you also to answer um, comes from someone asking, what made you choose Berkeley? Um, or why, why are you still at Berkeley? So I know you guys probably had a lot of different options when coming to college and a lot of a big decision to make um, and everyone kind of make their, makes their decision for different reasons. So yeah, just specifically you two, why did you decide to come to Berkeley and kind of what's your Berkeley story? And we can start with Violet again. Yeah, so hot take. I did not want to end up at UC Berkeley. I was born and raised in the city of Berkeley. My older brother is a grad student here and I love him very much, but I only applied to Berkeley to prove that I could get in because he got in and like he's not smarter than me. He's my brother. Same genes. Um, so then I got in and I very quickly realized that I did not want to pay twice the amount of tuition to go to a private school that was out of state. So I was like, all right, that's fine. I mean, I love California anyway. I'll go to a UC. Great. Uh, and then I very quickly realized again, shoot, Berkeley has astounding programs in literally all of the many things I might even consider studying. So at the time I was thinking about atmospheric science and earth sciences and the thing I'm in is still like pretty related to that. Uh, but I wasn't sure I wanted to stay there. And so I wanted to go somewhere that would give me the flexibility to really have like incredible research and academic opportunities in a wide variety of disciplines because I'm very much a like breadth. I go for breadth, not depth. I like taking a bunch of different classes that I'm not necessarily qualified for in really different topics. And like that is what's exciting and, and fun and engaging for me. Um, and I knew that any class I would take on any topic at Berkeley would be like a rigorous, amazing introduction to that, even if I wasn't going to go into that level of depth. So that made me excited about Berkeley. And I did end up going here. And at first I was like, oh man, same town. But I really re quickly realized that Berkeley is just, as a university, is a really different and unique place to be. And I think that the academic culture has been an incredible opportunity. Yeah, and to go into a bit more depth of my own story, I actually wanted to be a business or econ major. Berkeley was the only school I applied to for anything not business or econ. And I got in and ended up attending because I just think that being able to combine business with a technological background was something I was really interested in. Um, so I ended, doing, ended up coming here. Um, during my first two months where I struggled, I kind of thought like, if I made the wrong decision, did I screw myself over for four years? I don't know. But um, gradually over time, I just learned to really appreciate everything um, that I, would, I had access to. I think like struggling initially made me more appreciative of the university 
of the people here, of the community that Berkeley created. Um, and I learned to love my major too, despite how difficult Berkeley STEM, Berkeley engineering is. Um, I learned that Berkeley helped me realize that this is kind of the career I wanna pursue. I wanna keep learning more about it. And honestly, I can't really imagine myself at any other campus. And I'm really happy that I didn't go for business or econ on the other side of the country and I came to Berkeley. Thank you both to Sam and Violet for those amazing Berkeley stories. Um, and I just wanted to really quickly share some ways uh, for you to contact us after this virtual visit. Um, we've already gone through all the content in the Q&A and this is just one last little bit of information. Um, follow us on our social media at Visit UC Berkeley. You'll hear more um, just about other opportunities with other campus ambassadors and what they're doing, um, as well as upcoming tours. Email tour at berkeley.uu in case you had a question today or come up with a question after the tour that you weren't able to get answered. Uh, feel free to just send us an email there. Fairtalkblog.berkeley.edu is our blog for all our campus ambassadors and they're, um, they tell more of the Berkeley stories and more of what they're experiencing during college and kind of give an insight into student life on campus. Um, a different virtual uh, visit is on our um, YouTube channel at Visit UC Berkeley. There's also general uh, virtual visits, panels, there's a bunch of different stuff on there. So check out our YouTube channel. Um, and then at the bottom, we have a bunch of different links for different resources, coronavirus.berkeley.edu, 150w.berkeley.edu, engineering.berkeley.edu. So if you wanna check out those websites after a visit, they have a ton of information there. I know um, for a recent Nobel laureates, I think news.berkeley.edu also has a bunch of information. If you wanna read some articles or watch um, the like press conference, all of that is gonna be um, on our different sites. Um, and then of course, visit.berkeley.edu for other student panels and virtual visits. Um, but yeah, that's the end of our tour. Thank you so much um, to everyone for hopping on and spending an hour with us. And thank you to our two guides um, for giving an amazing tour and answering those questions and that last Berkeley story. Um, so yeah, thank you. And to end off our tour, I think I'll ask Violet and Sam to unmute themselves and we'll do a Go Bears on three. So one, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears. Thank you, everyone.